Hi, and welcome to Module 7, Assessment Readiness. This is perfect for getting ready for the SBAC test. Uh, module 7 type questions that you'll see. Okay, first, we have which expressions below are equivalent to negative 3x plus 6? Select all of them that apply. Hmm. Okay, well, what I did is I wrote all of these down. I wrote this down here because there's really just not enough room on the paper to show you all of this. So I wrote each of these down. I'll start with the first one. Uh, and I looked at my target. My target is getting negative 3x plus 6. So first, I have to combine like terms, the variable terms, negative 4x plus negative 7. So 4 plus negative 7, that is negative 3. So putting these two together right here, that's negative 3x. Okay, so far, so good. Now I have uh, 2 plus 4. And 2 plus 4, that is definitely positive 6. Plus 6, it looks like that one's a go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to color in that one right there. Okay, next. Uh, maybe I'll check this one down here. Negative 3 times the quantity x minus 2. Okay, I have that right here. And I have to distribute the negative 3. Negative 3 times x, that's negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2. And you might be wondering, well, that's minus 2. Yeah, but subtracting is the same thing as adding its opposite. So we also need to recognize that that's a negative 2. So negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And yeah, it looks like that hits the target too. Super. We're two for two so far. Next one here. I have uh, negative four. And I'm, I'm looking for how I could exactly mention this. Okay. Negative four X minus X. Negative four X minus X. That is negative five X. Because... This is uh, minus 1x, and subtracting is the same thing as adding its opposite. And negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. And you know what? I can just stop right now. I know this isn't going to work because putting this one and this one together is already not getting me negative 3x. So that one's done. Okay, this one right here. 1 half. Ooh, a fraction times both of these. Well, it's a half times each of these here. And a half, half multiplied by something is the same as taking half of it. So 1 half times this is 1 half of negative 6. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. And there's an x right there, so it's a variable term. And so far, I'm on target right there. Yep, that's working so far. And then plus half... 1 half times 12 is half of 12, which is 6. And yeah, that hits it right there too. So I'm saying that this one was it right there. Okay, that. And that one was not because I already figured, yeah, that was already negative 5x. So I'm skipping that one. I'm going straight down to this other one right here. So these three all worked. So I'm taking a look at number two here. Consider the, in, the inequality. One half and minus six is greater than or equal to negative five and two thirds. Which of these are correct solutions? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this inequality and figure out which of these actually work. So I'm going to focus on solving this right here. I wrote down the same inequality right here. And now I'm going to do it on paper. Um, first thing I have to do is I have to add six. Hmm, this is going to be kind of tricky. These are different signs. I have to subtract these. So for now, I'm going to have to put 6 on top, minus 5 and 2 thirds. 6. 6 is the same thing as 5 plus 1. And 1 is the same thing as 3 thirds. So this is 6 is the same thing as 5 plus 3 thirds. Thirds. I hope that you would agree. And I did this because I need this to be able to subtract these two. So instead of six, instead of six, I'm going to write five and three thirds because five plus one is still six. All right. So when I subtract these, 
it's going to be, uh, well, that's zero right there. And three minus two is one third. Okay, so <laughs> what I have so far is negative five and two thirds plus six is that one third. Now I have, what do I have? This is canceled out. So one half n is greater than or equal to one third. And this, it, there are several ways of looking at this. I pause for a moment. One way is seeing that n, one half n is the same thing as n over two because one half times n over one equals n over two. See, I'm, I'm, when you multiply these to get together, you actually get this as well. So I put these together and I changed it so it looks a little bit easier to know what to do. If I'm dividing by two here, I have to multiply two times one third to get my solution for this. So n is greater than or equal to two times one third. One third times two over one, that's going to be two thirds. So what this is saying is anything larger than two thirds is going to work in our original inequality. And this saves us a little bit of time, believe it or not. So now, n has to be larger than two thirds, or it could be equal to two thirds. So is negative four larger than two thirds? No, that is false. But n could be equal to two thirds. So yeah, it could be two thirds. I'm good with that, true. And Larger is two and a half larger than two thirds. Yeah, I mean this is even smaller than one, and that's two and a half. That's certainly larger than two thirds. So there you go. Okay. In this one, Darian wants to run more than five miles a week. So far, he has run two and three fourths miles. Write and solve an inequality to determine how many more miles Darian has to run to meet his goal. I have this. The inequality is this. He has uh, this is how many miles he has to run plus two and three fourths. It has to be greater than five. This is the inequality. So when it says write and write an inequality to determine how many more miles he has to run, well, he he wants to run more than five miles. So all of this, how much he runs, has to be greater than five miles. Okay. He's already run two and three fourths miles, and we have to add to that how many more miles he needs to run to reach his goal. So the miles he reaches, uh, miles he needs to run, plus what he's already ran, has to be greater than the goal of reaching five miles. So uh, m is the number of additional miles he has to run, and m is greater than two and one fourth. And I get that by solving the inequality. I have to subtract two and three fourths. And I get m is greater than uh, 5. I'm going to do the same kind of trick as I did up here. Um, 5 is the same thing as 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1. So 4 kind of plus 1. Uh, and 1 is the same thing as 4 fourths. So this is going to be 4 and 4 fourths minus two and three fourths. Okay, so I'm using that same trick. Four minus three is one fourth. Four minus two is two. So that's how I got the M is greater than two and one fourth. And that's right here. Uh, so Darian must run more than two and a fourth miles. Check the solution by substituting the great, uh, value greater than two and one fourth into its original inequality to make sure uh, that it makes the inequality true. And this is this last part is answering this. Explain how you can check your solution. And that's what it is. To check your solution, you choose something that's larger, greater than two and one fourth, and you plug it into the original inequality, which is this, to make sure it's true. I'm not going to do that, but you could. So this one, the owner of a miniature golf course plans to spend no more than $300 on supplies. Golf balls cost $6.30 per dozen and putters cost $10.95. The owner decides to buy 10 dozen golf balls. Can the owner afford to buy 20 putters? Right and solve any equality to justify your answer. So I'm saying yes. 
he does have enough money to buy 20 putters. The situation can be modeled by the inequality of this. And how do I get this? Well, uh, he wants to spend no more, spend no more than $300, which means 300 is the greatest amount that you can spend. All the money that he spends right here has to be less than, or it could be equal to 300. So that's it. That's what it's saying in this whole statement right here. That's how I know that this has to open to the 300 and this has to be the money that he spends. So uh, golf balls cost $6.30 six and he buys 10 of them. So this times this will tell you how much money he spends on that. And putters cost $10.95 times P for the number of putters he buys. So P is the number of putters the owner can afford. And the solution of the inequality, uh, I'm going to show you right here. So I have the inequality rewritten here, and I'm going to solve it. $6.30 times 10. That multiplying by 10 just moves the decimal once over there. So $10.95 times the number of putters plus $63, which is how much you spend in golf balls, has to be less than or equal to $300, which is his maximum budget. If you subtract 63 then you have $10.95 times the number of putters he can buy has to be less than or equal to, uh, what, that's 737? Uh, yeah, 300, uh, 237. Then you take, you have to divide by $10.95 on both sides. And P has to be less than or equal to, uh, when you do this and you round to the nearest, uh, hundredth right there because we're dealing with money you get uh what 237 divided by ten dollars 95 cents is 21 dollars 64 cents 21 dollars 64 cents so that means he could buy 21.64 putters and or fewer and so since she since you can't buy 0.64 putters he can the the owner can afford to buy 21 putters or fewer and the question was can the putter can the owner afford to buy 20 putters well yeah he can afford to buy 21 if he wants and so there you go that's what you got to know about the module 7 assessment readiness thank you for watching